Parkway and Route 15 Bypass Interchange Neighborhood Meeting. My name is Karen Franklin and I am the project manager for this project. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the web page. After an informational presentation to last about a half an hour, we will hold a question and answer session with the plan to end the meeting by 9 p.m. Questions typed into the Q&A box available on your screen will be answered first. If we have time, we will take questions from those with raised hands, and then we will unmute those who are calling in. We do have over almost 90 people attending this meeting at this point, so we ask you to limit your questions to a couple sentences or two to three minutes and keep your questions specific to the project presented. After the meeting, we will open an online survey to obtain your feedback on the alternatives. So let's go ahead and get started with some introductions. Also presenting will be John Maddox and Dana Trone from Whitman Requart and Associates, also, also known as WRA. And they're our design engineer for this study. Also with us from the town project team is Renee LaFollette, Director of Public Works and Capital Projects, Phil Jones, Assistant Director of Capital Projects, and Christine Rowe is another of our project managers. She's gonna be our host tonight. We also have members of the WRA design team available to help with answers at the end of the presentation. There are also several local and state level elected officials registered to attend this meeting. So the meeting agenda will go over the project background and a little bit about the goals and the initial study work. Then we're gonna present the alternatives, discuss some next steps, and then hold a question and answer session. So this project has been identified for many years in area plans. The 1956 Leesburg Thoroughfare Plan first included the concept for the Route 15 7 bypass around Leesburg. By 1986, the plan showed the Route 15 bypass as limited access and included an interchange at the Battlefield and Route 15 bypass intersection. And when we say limited access, we mean that there are no roads directly intersecting with the bypass. Instead, there are overpasses and interchanges with access to the bypass through entrance and exit ramps. Currently, multiple plans identify an interchange or overpass at this location. These plans include the new Legacy Leesburg Transportation Improvement Plan, the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority Transaction 2040 Plan Update, and the Loudoun County Transportation Plan. Because of the great advanced planning for this interchange, in 1987, the town acquired the main footprint needed for this interchange in conjunction with the neighborhood development in the area. The Northern Virginia Transportation Authority, otherwise known as NVTA, has provided $2 million to fund the Interchange Access Report, or IAR. This study is the first step in the eventual construction of an interchange and will help to confirm that an interchange is the appropriate option for the community. The IAR will also identify and evaluate the interchange alternatives, receive input from the public, identify a preferred alternative, and develop an initial cost estimate. This information will then be used to apply for funding to move forward with design efforts. So the project goals include reducing intersection congestion, improve pedestrian and bicycle access across Route 15 bypass, and remove the last signalized intersection on the Route 15 bypass. And we're going to talk about some other projects nearby that will also be removing signalized intersections. Project elements include a grade separated interchange or overpass with a 10 foot shared use path along the north side of Battlefield Parkway and a five foot sidewalk along the south side of Battlefield Parkway. The project will also involve removing access from Route 15 bypass to the Balls Bluff Road and Dry Hollow Road and that's going to be discussed in a couple of slides. So just a little bit about some adjacent projects. There are several nearby projects underway on either side of the Battlefield Route 15 bypass interchange intended to help address congestion on the Route 15 corridor. To the south of Battlefield, shown in aqua on the slide, is an interchange on Route 17 bypass at Edwards Ferry Road and Fort Evans Road. An interchange justification report 
and preliminary design has already been completed and the project is moving into the detailed design soon. This project will make the battlefield intersection the last remaining at grade intersection on the bypass. The Edwards Ferry Road and Fort Evans Road interchange with Route 15 bypass is further along in the design process and therefore it's prioritized to be completed before the battlefield Route 15 bypass interchange. There are also two projects managed by Loudoun County on the Route 15 corridor north of Leesburg, which are intended to reduce congestion. The first project, shown in orange on the map, involves the widening of Route 15 north from two lanes to four lanes between Battlefield Parkway and Montressor Road, which includes the Raspberry Falls Whites Ferry Road intersection. This project recently submitted 90% design plans and is expected to occur well before the Battlefield and Route 15 bypass project. There is also a study concerning congestion on Route 15 North from Montressor Road to the Maryland State Line, shown in yellow. You can find more information about both these projects through the Loudoun County project web pages. We have and will continue to coordinate with these other projects as we move forward. But tonight, you're here to learn about the Battlefield and Route 15 interchange alternatives. I'm going to turn it over to Dana and John to discuss their study activities and the alternatives under consideration. Dana? Thanks, Karen. Um, so a traffic study to support the interchange access report is currently underway to evaluate existing and future traffic volumes and operations. Shown on this slide is a map of the study area that we will be evaluating as part of the traffic operations analysis. It extends down to the Fort Evans Road intersection along the bypass and up to the North King Street intersection to the north. Along Battlefield Parkway, the study area extends to Catoctin Circle to the west and Shanks Evans Road to the east. Traffic forecasts are being prepared for an assumed 2030 opening year and 2050 design year. As Karen noted, there is not currently funding for the project, but this is just an estimated year when funding could potentially be obtained, and then we add 20 years to make sure that any improvements that are considered will serve traffic volumes for a substantial period of time. The forecasts accounted for funded and approved projects in the area, including the proposed interchange to the south at Edwards Ferry Road and Fort Evans Road, as well as the widening along Route 15 from Battlefield Parkway to Montressor Road. Along the Route 15 bypass, depending on the location within the study area, approximately 13 to 26% growth is anticipated over the approximately 30 year study period. And along Battlefield Parkway, there's about 4 to 12% growth anticipated through 2050. This is a total growth amount over the 31 years from our 2019 pre COVID base year to 2050. We chose 2015 as our base year in order to provide conditions not impacted by changes in travel patterns uh, during COVID. So using these forecasts, we're analyzing the various alternatives under consideration to understand how each will address the needs of the study area in the morning and evening peak hours. We will be taking the feedback that we received from you tonight and through the survey and incorporating refinements into our traffic models. I did want to note that all of our interchange alternatives that we're going to be presenting tonight work well from a traffic operations perspective based on our preliminary analysis due to the removal of the traffic signal along Route 15 bypass with relatively low delays for the intersections along Battlefield Parkway. I also wanted to let you know that we're looking at the potential need for traffic signals at Battlefield Parkway at Fieldstone Drive to the west of the bypass and Balls Bluff Road to the east of the bypass. We had collected traffic volumes at these intersections about a year ago, but we just collected new count data earlier this week now that traffic patterns are returning closer to normal and also not impacted by the detours associated with the Route 7 at Battlefield interchange that was completed last year. So now I'd like to turn it over to John to discuss the limited access study and the alternatives under consideration. John, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Thanks, Dan. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you all for uh, you know, attending this virtual public meeting. It really gives us an opportunity to share information with you, but more importantly, for you to share information with us. So thank you for taking the time to come. I'm going to first start by talking about the access management along the Route 15 bypass that you can see uh, in the screen here. The, the bypass runs uh, north and south, you know, up and down on that uh, particular sheet there. And I, what I'm going to talk about here is common to all alternatives. 
the, the Route 15 bypass, our main goal was to remove that signalized intersection at Battlefield. But just north of there, there is also another at grade intersection that is not signalized, and that is with Dry Hollow Road and Balls Bluff Road. You know, because of the interchange, the ramps going to the north, uh, you know, towards this area, traffic will be merging in and diverging in right in the vicinity of this intersection. So, from a design perspective, we would like to remove those access points uh, to the bypass. Now, how do we do that and evaluate it as we, we complete a study? I'm going to start on the west side uh, with Dry Hollow Road. Uh, there is private property that has legal access to the bypass there. And what we would propose here is to study providing access up near uh, the, the school entrance there and, and extending a road in to provide legal access that would allow us to close the access along the bypass. Now, moving to the west side of Balls Bluff Road, uh, here is a larger parcel. Uh, we're looking at two different alternatives to be able to provide access that would allow us to remove the existing access at Balls Bluff Road. The first <clears throat> is up at the top of the screen, Little Spring Road. Here we would be extending that road to the south until it intersected with the private property and then allow that private property to have access up to Route 15 along Little Spring Road. Uh, the second alternative that you see on the far right of the screen is, uh, you know, Balls Bluff Road there, and you're going into the park in that area. But developing a road that would replace that access would require us to, to widen that road and provide a, a full legal access into that private property there before we could remove the access off of the bypass. Now, moving on to the, the interchange that we're going to talk, talk about tonight or the interchange alternatives. And, and first, I wanted to say what you're seeing here tonight is conceptual designs that allow us to you know, be able to complete the uh, traffic analysis uh, and evaluation of these interchange alternatives, but also to give us an opportunity to you, know, give, you give feedback to us. We're going to discuss three basic alternatives tonight. And just want to make sure you understand we're early in the process of the design of these uh, interchanges options. Next slide, Tyler. Alternative A, option one, is an act is a roundabout interchange. I'm first going to begin by discussing what is common to all alternatives, which is along the Route 15 and the ramps up to Battlefield. So if the bypass there, one of our stated goals is to remove that signalized intersection, and we're accomplishing that by elevating battlefield up and over the bypass and placing a bridge shown in blue on the screen there. And then you would ramp back down to the existing roadway. That would allow us to remove that signal. Now, how does traffic from the bypass access to and from battlefield? It would be by the ramps shown on this screen ramps A, B, C, and D. This would allow traffic to proceed up to the intersection. And this would be common in all alternatives. What's going to change in my discussions is the how Battlefield uh, Parkway operates with different types of intersections. The other thing that's common to all alternatives, as you can see in light blue, the shared use path on the north side of Battlefield, and that is to replace the existing a path that you have along battlefield today. Uh, but further to enhance that pedestrian access along battlefield, we also are proposing a sidewalk on the south side of battlefield. Uh, and so you'd have you know, pedestrian facilities on both sides of a battlefield there. Now getting into discussing more of how battlefield would operate in this particular alternative, the roundabout alternative, we are proposing a single lane roundabout at these intersections. So you'd only have one lane that would go around the roundabout on each side of this interchange. Now, these are normally designed to operate at 25 miles per hour. So similar to what you would see operation, 
you know, in a, a subdivision or other street network. Uh, one of the things here that uh, need to discuss is how we transition from the four lane battlefield, two lanes in each direction to the roundabout and across the bridge. So I'm going to begin on the east side and traveling west along the battlefield. As you come up to the roundabout, your rightmost lane is going to divert down that ramp and go to the north. The leftmost lane will proceed into the roundabout and be able to go around the roundabout and across the bridge. At the bridge there, you can see up in the upper left is a typical section. So you only have one lane of traffic in each direction on the bridge. And this would be one of the narrower bridges uh, within these alternatives that you'll see tonight. Traffic would then proceed around the other roundabout to the west and then pick up the second lane from ramp B in that direction. As far as overall performance, we, we do feel like Dana mentioned that this will operate much better than what you experience today at the signalized intersection because we're removing the bypass, the heavier traffic volume from these operations and traffic will have full access at this interchange. Now, moving on to alternative A, option two, and really the, the, the operations of the roadway and the ramp are, are very similar. Here, the study team was talking about how pedestrians have to uh, operate through a roundabout intersection. Uh, on, if you can go back to option one there, Tyler, for a second, as far as the pedestrian and bikes in the roundabout alternative, they have to cross at an unsignalized intersection or not protected. So they would have to wait for a gap in traffic. If you go back to option two, what we're proposing is to totally separate the pedestrians from vehicle traffic by relocating the shared use path to the north and able to put a tunnel underneath the ramp, come back up to the bridge, and on the other side, have that same type of uh, uh, path for the shared use. This would allow that the pedestrians and bikes to not have to wait uh, for a gap in traffic. They would have free flow uh, access to those facilities. One of the concerns the study team has here is a lot of times when you try to provide this type of separation, pedestrians or bikes will still follow the shortest path and go up towards the roundabout and not utilize the facilities that have been provided. Now, we would love to get your feedback on that particular difference between option one and option two here tonight. So if you have some thoughts, please let us know in those surveys. Proceeding to alternative B, which is a traditional diamond interchange. Uh, everything on the bypass and the ramps is very similar. Uh, what I'm going to discuss it is the battlefield operation. So if you come up those ramps, there would be a signalized intersection. You would be able to have full access east and west along battlefield. This particular alternative, you would continue the four lanes, two in each direction, all the way through the interchange. And on the bridge, you would have those four lanes plus left turn lanes in the median of there, either one or two lanes. Uh, one of the differences here is with the signalized intersection, there becomes, you know, more of a, a concern at looking at how Fieldstone Drive to the west and Balls Bluff Road to the east operate with these signalized intersections. You know, from a design standpoint, we would feel like that, that distance between the signalized intersection and the intersections just to the east and west would be substandard, but from the traffic volumes we see, we think we'll be able to handle that through the design process and get that to uh, operate very efficiently. As far as the pedestrians here, because you have a signalized intersection, it'd be similar to what you'd experience in town where you would come up, you could push a button at the, at the signal and it would turn the traffic lights red and, and you'd be able to proceed across the ramp with what we call a protected signal phase uh, for that. Uh, this alternative will operate very effectively. Uh, just as, like I mentioned before, if you're removing that signal down the bypass and taking the bypass traffic away, 
you will get very efficient traffic operations here on battlefield. Now moving forward to alternative C, which is what we refer to as a diverging diamond interchange or a DDI interchange. Uh, first, I want to talk about you know, how the operations on battlefield work with this uh, innovative intersection. Um, you know, you would starting on the east and heading west, you would come up to that first signalized intersection if you can follow the red dot on the screen. And you would proceed through that crossover uh, intersection. These are normally designed for 25 miles per hour. And then you, so you're driving on the, the right side of the road. As you come through this signalized intersection, you end up on the left side of the road and proceed across the bridge there that's showing. As you go to the other side, you would cross back over through that signal on the west side of the interchange and end up in the same position uh, heading down battlefield. Uh, you know, this, the, one of the reasons for this type of design, and it is an innovative design that is becoming more common around the US and Virginia, is what you're accomplishing is removing the left turn movements at those signalized intersections. So you only have two movements going through that signal or a two phase signal. One of the best examples of this alternative, I think that's close to uh, Leesburg, is at the I-66 and Route 15 interchange, if you would like to see one in operation. Again, we would have you know, the same concerns with uh, the spacing between Fieldstone Drive and the signal and Balls Bluff Road and the signal. As far as pedestrians, uh, this particular alternative, uh, just you'd be heading along the shared use path and cross the ramp there. And then you would proceed in the middle or in between the bridges at that signalized intersection under a protected phase. And you would proceed on across to the next signal and then split back into the, the normal pattern. Again, this would operate very well uh, from a traffic operation standpoint. Dana? Thanks, John. Um, because pedestrian safety across the bypass is a critical component of the study, we wanted to specifically look at how the pedestrian operations compare for the four alternatives under consideration. John has presented a lot of this information, but this compares the alternatives side by side from a pedestrian safety perspective. With alternative A, which is the double roundabout option one, uh, it has eight uncontrolled crossings of the roundabouts at various locations at the interchange. We're defining an uncontrolled crossing as a location where vehicles are not controlled by traffic signals and a controlled crossing is one that pedestrians get a walk or don't walk indication and vehicular traffic is controlled by traffic signals. For alternative A, option one, although there are eight uncontrolled crossings, those pedestrian crossings will be at low travel speeds as the roundabouts will be designed to reduce speeds to approximately 20 miles per hour, which reduces the potential for conflicts with pedestrians. As John noted, with the double roundabout option two, we have provided grade separated pedestrian crossings, meaning that the pedestrians will not have to find gaps in vehicular traffic to cross. This option requires pedestrians to walk farther out of their way. We will be designing this option to encourage pedestrians to use the tunnels, but sometimes challenging to fully discourage pedestrians from taking the most direct route. With alternative B, the traditional diamond alternative, we have six signalized crossings that are all controlled by signals, and this alternative also provides the most direct route. There is still the potential for conflicts with pedestrians if you have red light running at high speeds. However, this option does take away the decision-making process of finding gaps in traffic as pedestrians can cross during a walk indication. Alternative C, the diverging diamond, has eight pedestrian crossings that are a combination of six controlled and two uncontrolled crossings. Pedestrians would travel on a shared use path in between the eastbound and westbound battlefield parkway travel lanes on the bridge over the Route 15 bypass. So, in summary, there are trade offs regarding pedestrian safety with all four of the alternatives under consideration. And this is an area where we definitely like to hear your feedback in terms of your preferences when you complete the survey following our meeting tonight. So, now that you have seen uh, the four alternatives under consideration, 
This summarizes the screening of the interchange alternatives based on various criteria that we're using to ultimately select a preferred interchange alternative. We have shown the no build or the do nothing alternative in addition to the four alternatives ranking from excellent with the filled in green circle to poor with a filled in red circle. And this is just a preliminary assessment and will be refined as we continue the concept development and traffic operations analysis. For several of the screening criteria, the alternatives rate similarly. For example, for traffic operations along the Route 15 bypass, traffic operations along Battlefield Parkway, right of way impacts, and environmental impacts, all four alternatives rank similarly as the interchanges really don't uh, vary greatly for those criteria. In terms of pedestrian and bicycle convenience, we have noted that the double roundabout option two ranks less favorably than the other alternatives based on pedestrians having to travel out of their way. And we have noted roundabout option one is being less favorable due to the eight uncontrolled crossings mentioned on the last slide. In terms of traffic safety, alternative B and C are less favorable than the roundabout options due to the lower vehicle travel speeds with the roundabouts and the proven safety benefits of roundabouts. Alternative B and C are less favorable due to the intersection spacing for the two signalized intersections in relation to the adjacent intersections at Fieldstone Drive to the west and Balls Bluff Road to the east. Project costs are anticipated to be higher for the double roundabout option, primarily due to the grade separated pedestrian crossing, which adds substantial cost, as well as alternative C, the diverging diamond, which has a larger footprint compared to the other alternatives. And last, we have TBD or to be determined listed for community support. Uh, that's why we're here tonight to be able to incorporate your opinions and preferences into our decision making process for selection of a preferred alternative. Next, I'll turn it back over to, K to Karen to discuss next steps. Thank you. All right, thanks, John and Dana. So the next steps are gonna involve conducting that public survey where we're gonna tell you about and compile those results. We're gonna do that in May. In the summer of 2022, we're gonna ask town council to recommend an alternative for detailed study. In the fall winter of 2022, we're going to refine that recommended alternative. And in the winter spring of 2023, we plan on holding a second neighborhood meeting to provide more information to you and to get more input. And at the same time, we'll be drafting the interchange access report. During the summer of 2023, we'll go back to town council to get their endorsement of the IAR document. And in the fall of 2023, the IAR will be reviewed and approved by VDOT. And once the IAR is approved, we can initiate funding requests to begin detailed design. So it's important to note that this study phase to develop the IAR is just the initial phase to review potential alternatives, identify a preferred alternative, and develop an initial cost estimate. A lot more steps need to occur before this project can be constructed, including detailed design, land acquisition, utility relocation, and construction. This initial study phase to complete the, the IAR will provide information which can be used to initiate funding requests so we can move forward with detailed design. All right, well, we definitely really, really wanna get your input. What, what do you, which alternative do you like better? We'd really like to know. We've developed an online survey, which is gonna be available through the webpage when this meeting ends. Um, the survey results will be presented to town council and it's going to be an important part of their decision making process. They really want to know what you think. We're going to leave the survey open until May 16th. So please go ahead and get on there and, and provide us some input. You can get go to the online survey through the web page at the link below. If you'd rather, you can either print off a survey form from the web page. We've got a link to a PDF, or you can request a hard copy and then mail or drop it off at the town hall after you've filled it out. And as always, if you have questions, you can go ahead and email or call me. My information is below, but it's also on the web page if you need it. So thank you for coming tonight and learning about our project. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to join us and we hope the presentation was informative. We will post the presentation materials and the recording to the webpage shortly. If you want to receive periodic email updates about the project, we encourage you to subscribe to the project email list. 
and you can find that link at the bottom of the web page. At this point, let's start our question and answer session. Questions typed into the Q&A box will be answered first. Make sure you direct your questions to all panelists. If we have time, we'll unmute anyone who has raised their hand and then unmute those calling in via a phone. We really wanna answer everyone's questions, but we do have 144 people on the call right now. So please limit your questions to two to three minutes and we really need you to keep your questions specific to the project presented. We will end the meeting by 9 p.m. If we don't get to your question, we will be posting a frequently asked question sheet to the webpage for your reference. Christine, over to you for questions. Okay, let's start. The first question is, the Route 15 light is currently not really an issue since the traffic backs up from the Raspberry Falls light. What is being done to remove that bottleneck? And have we investigated if removing the Raspberry Falls light will still need a bypass? It's only two hours in the afternoon that this is an issue. Um, well, thank you uh, for that question. Um, so uh, this study is not specifically uh, examining improvements at the Raspberry Falls light. And that has been evaluated as part of studies that have um, been completed. Um, and the design that's underway by the county. Um, however, um, with those projects that are already uh, in progress, the Battlefield Parkway traffic signal will still remain a choke point along the bypass. And although the widening uh, project to the north will greatly reduce congestion at the intersection, it still doesn't address the need to provide safe passage to pedestrians and bicycles uh, across the bypass. Um, in addition, with the investment um, that the town um, has been making to remove the signals along the bypass, including Edwards Ferry Road and Fort Evans Road, um, this project is uh, consistent with those projects um, and the town's long range planning and goals um, to create uh, the limited access uh, facility along the bypass. Okay, moving on to the next question. What will you do to discourage more development along Route 15 if the road is widened? So this question continues with widening the roads uh, will impact scenery if development continues. So the the development north of the town corporate limits is a Loudoun County is tied to their comprehensive plan, both from a zoning planning and zoning perspective and their transportation and comprehensive plans. So that is not anything that the town has control over. And I would recommend that you direct that question to your Loudoun County supervisor to discuss that concern with them. And Renee is a follow up to the question to that question. There was a second question that was asking if this project was. Trying to make it easier for people from Maryland to commute. We're not looking to make it easier for one set of people over another to ease their commute. This project will ultimately help the residents within the town of Leesburg to eliminate the congestion that is currently a, that happening every almost every day of the week and Saturdays and Sundays at the bypass and Battlefield Parkway. We hear from a number of residents on a regular basis about the congestion and the and the hazards of the intersection, which is part of the reason that this project is in our capital program for this interchange access report. And in doing this study, part of it is getting your feedback. So all of these comments and questions will be recorded for us to use as we further develop our 
our interchange access report. Next question is, what will we do to mitigate noise pollution that is caused by increased traffic on Route 15? It is already noisy as it is, and at least now cars have a stop along the way. So, as part of this project, you know, it, we're early on in the study phase and, and before it's actually funded for, um, you know, full design and right away and construction. Uh, the town ha has committed to do a, a full noise analysis following the federal guidelines once this project is uh, funded and moving forward in design. So uh, at that point, uh, within that design phase, you know, there would be a full noise study completed where we would go out and you know record noise levels and do a full analysis with the improvements prefer, you know, proposed for the preferred alternative. Uh, you know, from a, a very early uh, look and trying to establish a cost estimate, we, we do feel that there will be some uh, noise barriers warranted at some locations along the bypass. Uh, but, uh, you know, this study will not determine whether those it will be finalized or not. We just really need to wait till it's funded and we know the exact details to be able to answer, you know, where those potential sound barriers would be. But we are, we're committed to doing that analysis in the next phase of this project. Next. Thanks. When, uh, next question. When construction happens, will the Battlefield Parkway Route 15 intersection close for a detour route similar to the Battlefield Parkway Route 7 single point urban interchange when that interchange was constructed? So, uh, determining how the traffic would be managed is, is usually again in that. Uh, final design uh, stage, but if you'll notice, and I don't know, Tyler, if you can pull up uh, one of the alternatives, we have tried to shift the alignment in these conceptual alternatives uh, to the south a little bit so that we could maintain uh, the traffic operations during construction of this interchange. So that will be you know, a, a possibility with any of these alternatives. Uh, normally, when an interchange like this, you, you will have certain movements that you may have to close for a short duration. Now, the Route 7 and Battlefield, you know, that was a, a full closure, uh, you know, at, on that particular location. You know, that was, you know, determined through evaluating several different alternatives that that would be the most beneficial uh, for that project and that there was sufficient uh, detours for traffic. So really that final analysis would come in what we call a transportation management plan in that final design, but it could go either way here uh, as far as closing it or maintaining it, you know, at the movements at the existing intersection. Okay, next question. What impacts are anticipated to the church property east of the interchange? Will land be needed for the sidewalk? Uh, yeah, so looking at the church property, we are anticipating mostly grading easements at this time, uh, adding the south, uh, south side sidewalk may require a, a strip of right of way, but those are details that as we move forward with our refined alternative, we'll be able to vet out um, more clearly. Um, but at this time, we're looking at possibly some, some temporary grading easements um, in that area with maybe a sliver for the sidewalk. Will the bridge over Route 15 have a bridge support pier in the middle? So the, uh, a detailed design of the bridge, you know, would come again in that uh, later stage. A lot of times uh, we will put a pier in the median because it reduces the vertical uh, height that we have to raise uh, 
battlefield, but we also often do a eliminate that pier and do a single span bridge. And so, you know, when, once this is funded, that would be analyzed of what would be the best and most economical method of not only looking at the bridge and the safety aspects, but the cost of raising battlefield, you know, depending on that structure depth. Uh, so, but that is a potential to eliminate that pier. How will people get across Route 15 while the construction is going on? As part of uh, you know designing this project, we would maintain all existing pedestrian operations, and so uh, we would keep that shared use path operating and have it protected by the a signal phase. Uh, you know, as I talked about, if you you know, shift. You know, a little bit to the south, we would build another facility to always maintain the pedestrian traffic across Route 15 at this location. That's just a very critical element of, of this uh, project was, you know, that pedestrian and bike use that we see out there. Okay. Why not roundabout option one with a red signal on demand on the ramps for pedestrians? Uh, so the reason that roundabouts work well is due to motorists taking turns entering a roundabout when they're able to find a gap in the traffic circulating in the roundabout. Um, and the roundabout approaches are designed with curvature to slow speeds and allow pedestrians to find safe gaps in traffic. Installing a traffic signal at the roundabout um, would essentially change the overall function of the roundabout and would potentially be an unexpected condition for motorists as they wouldn't typically expect to stop for a signal at the roundabout. Um, but again, we're, we're confident that with the geometry that we can incorporate into the roundabouts that you can create um, safe pedestrian crossings. Um, due to the slower travel speeds. Okay. The next question is, are we prioritizing vehicles and out of state travelers or people who live here? Your proposals mostly prioritize cars, not the people who live here. Calvin, do you want to take this one? You're muted. Renee, you got any thoughts on this question? I, I think it goes to the previous question that we answered. The, the point of the project is to help all of the traffic that is constantly stuck in the congestion at that intersection, whether it be town residents or commuters further to the north in Loudoun County. We are looking at alternatives that have pedestrian and bicycle functionality to them as well as the vehicular traffic. So that is a consistent theme through all four of our alternatives is to provide safe passage for bike and ped with whatever improvement ultimately ends up being done for the intersection. Next question, how does this align with national and state vision zero goals and has the Virginia Highway Safety Improvement Office guided the design alternatives. John, I, I think you're on mute. Like... Okay. So, I don't know, Dana, if, if you want to jump in here too, but. Um... I, I can jump in, John. Um, so, um, 
as far, as far as you know specifically aligning with vision zero i will say that um roundabouts um which are one of the alternatives under considered or cons are, are one of the you know proven safety countermeasures um that are considered as part of both state and federal uh, vision zero goals um, and in terms of the Virginia Highway Safety Improvement Office, as part of the interchange access report, um, it's being administered by the town, but uh, in close coordination uh, with VDOT as um, both um, the uh, district, um, the VDOT district office, as well as the VDOT central office, where the Virginia Highway Safety Improvement um, Program is administered at the central office, both um, uh, of those groups within VDOT will be reviewing and approving um, the IAR process and the selection of a preferred alternative. So in that manner, manner it is being coordinated um, with the Virginia Highway Safety Improvement Program. How will the current Battlefield Parkway Route 15 bypass intersection handle the extra traffic once the 66 outside the Beltway Express Lanes open to traffic? So, as part of the traffic forecasting effort um, that's underway, um, it takes into account the regional travel demand model which does include the 66 outside the Beltway project as one of the projects to be assumed to be complete prior to our 2030 and opening year and 2050 design year. So those um, in any potential increase in traffic that would result from that project, it would be incorporated into our forecasts and then also uh, taken into account in our operations analysis. Will detailed diagrams of all the options be uh, be available to vote on? So we are going to put diagrams on the survey. There are the same exhibits that you see on the um, that you saw earlier are gonna be on the survey so you can refer to them as you're answering your questions. I think that's the question you asked. I think that's right, Karen. While this project is awaiting funding, is there a plan in place to extend safety ride operating hours to allow pedestrians safe transportation across Route 15 most employees and patrons of businesses east of Route 15 work beyond the 7 p.m. weekday, 6 p.m. weekend cutoff. Right now, we don't have any plans to extend those hours, but knowing that this is a concern, that is something that we can look at and have discussions with Loudoun County. Ms. Loudoun County is the operator of the safety ride, the town is involved um, from a payment standpoint on that. So that is something that uh, we can talk about in house and work with Loudoun County on no guarantees at this time. The land acquired from the Potomac Crossing developer in the 1980s for this intersection was large enough to accommodate a classic cloverleaf interchange. That was the largest thing they thought they'd need to accommodate. If you don't need all of the land for alternatives A or C, what would become of the right of way originally acquired? Well, we would have to go back and look at the actual proffer uh, for that and uh... To determine that ex exact answer, so we could you know do that. Uh, I would say that you know what you're seeing here with the interchanges is just the roadway elements of those. There will be slope limits that extend farther out, and there's the potential for stormwater management basins and other thing, other elements of the project that might take up some of that space that you see, but. Uh, we can re research that proffer that uh, established this right away and see how that would be handled. I don't know Renee or 
someone from the town may remember how that was uh, established in the 1980s. It, it was established as a full right of way proffer to, to the town. Um, so the land that is not taken for the interchange itself, stormwater management, landscaping, et cetera, would remain as right of way. Next question, was driver confusion, like with roundabouts or diverging diamonds, considered when determining the relative pedestrian safety analysis? So, as far as the roundabouts and, and diverging diamond interchanges, like I said, they're becoming more common uh, around Virginia and, and the U.S. and you know, their operations with vehicles and, and pedestrians has yes, uh, proven to be, be safe. One of the key things of those innovative intersections is that reduced speed that we talked about by designing that you know, into those interchange. Now, the the I think you're referring to the evaluation matrix that we pulled up there. You know, that is very subjective to to different people and how you would look at, at those types of intersections. Uh, uh, Dana, as far as safety, the statistics, you would probably know better, but uh, and we do feel all these could work very effectively and safely for you know, the pedestrians and vehicles. And if I can chime in, I, I do wanna let everybody know that we are consulting with the police department as well with these alternatives and getting their feedback as well. Next question. There's a lot of congestion towards Point of Rocks, uh, and there's a fear that that congestion will not be fixed. What happens to these options when the traffic northbound stops? Um, so, as you're likely aware, um, Lowndes County is evaluating various alternatives for improvements to the bypass north of Montressor Road and the widening north of Battlefield um, to Montressor is very far into the design phase. Um, and based on the traffic studies that have been performed for um, the, the widening um, that's in design, um, they're not anticipating that traffic would continue to back up as far south as Battlefield Parkway. Um, but with all of these options, um, the traffic on the bypass um, would be free flowing um, and, and, and should there be any backups, although we're not anticipating, uh, this project would allow um, traffic in the community along Battlefield Parkway um, to travel across the bypass free, freely, as well as pedestrians and bi bicycles, um, regardless of what is happening on um, the bypass. Alternative A, which was the double roundabout, looks similar to the double roundabout near Paonian Springs. Would that interchange be similar? All right, and Kristen, yeah, I would hate to you know, compare those without knowing more about that particular intersection. So that would be something that we could uh, you know, gather some more information and provide a response to that later, unless someone the, knows that the intersection. Referencing well. the, I think it's the interchange of nine and Route Seven. Yes, that's correct. One of the big differences is that the roundabouts for nine and Route Seven are two lane roundabouts. So maybe you could speak to the difference between those, John. Okay, you know, a, a two lane roundabout actually has, you know, like, like that sounds, you have two lanes going around that full roundabout section and they are more difficult to traverse. I, I believe there's a lot of people that would, might have a different opinion than that. that. That's kind of why we like the single lane roundabout. If you're able to handle the traffic volumes that's anticipated, 
uh, to me, a single lane roundabout is much more efficient and safer just because of the slower speed and the left, the fewer lanes. And I don't know, Dana, if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, there, there's fewer conflict points at the single roundabouts that are under consideration as part of this study. Um, additionally, when you only have a single lane entering the roundabout, that's um, a single lane that a pedestrian would have to find a gap in in order to cross. Um, so I, I would say they would not, um, you know, similar in shape, but but um, not similar from an operational perspective. There is a concern about additional traffic along battlefield since there is already speeding. How will pedestrian safety uh, pedestrians safely cross battlefield near the elementary school? Dana, do you want to take that one? I think Calvin's having trouble with the mute. You're muted, Dana. Sorry, I was on. I was on uh, <laughs> mute too as well. Um, so I, I guess we don't anticipate that with these improvements um, to battlefield or the, it, with the interchange improvements in battlefield that we would be attracting traffic to battlefield. Um, as you're well well aware, battlefield is frequently used to bypass um, congestion that people are anticipating. On the bypass, so um, you know we don't we don't believe that this would increase um, traffic volumes on battlefield. Um, additionally, you know there still will be some control of speeds along battlefield, um, as we've mentioned numerous times with the roundabout. They have a um, effect of of calming or slowing traffic um, speeds, um, and with all of the alternatives under consideration, you you will have. Um, some form of control, whether it be a roundabout or um, a traffic signal. There was a briefing given by Loudoun County and VDOT to the town council, and they're planning on adding an additional light, uh, traffic light at uh, Route 15 bypass and the King Street intersection. Adding more traffic lights here doesn't make sense. Have these plans taken their planning into account? Um, so, yes, we are taking into account the improvements that are proposed to the north as part of the county's widening project. Um, the signal that they're proposing at the Route 15 bypass uh, King Street intersection is uh, what's called a green tea, which is um, an innovative way of um, providing control of conflicting movements while minimizing the number of movements that have to stop. Um, with the green tea, um, northbound bypass traffic will not be stopping at that location. So that would minimize any potential that traffic from that location that, that wouldn't have an effect of backing up into the bypass um or into the battlefield um, intersection and in terms of adding more traffic lights here um you know our goal is to remove the traffic signal on the bypass um you know we are obviously considering installing signals on battlefield parkway but they will be much um, smaller signals with fewer traffic phases which means the number of different um, movements that we have to accommodate at each um, intersection and operate far more efficiently um, than the one you know large intersection that we have um, on the bypass that's um, controlling both battlefield traffic as well as bypass traffic what is the difference in distance for the pedestrian options for alternative a I would esti estimate that at about a thousand feet. John, I think that's something that we can make sure we have more information about as we move forward also. And Tyler, you may have measured it exactly, but. Uh... 
Yeah, we could follow up with that to give more exact numbers. But a thousand feet is is in the ballpark. Why is this project being considered? There is no issue with this light that a non signalized intersection is resolving. So, I'll start this question and Renee Calvin, you may want to chime in. Uh, it kind of goes back to the slide that I had at the beginning where we talked about 15 bypass being intended to be limited access. That is 1 of the main reasons the additional. Big reason is to get the pedestrians as safely as we can. Across route 15, and I know that the PD did mention that the 15 bypass corridor is 1 of their most dangerous corridors for pedestrians to cross. So, we're really trying to improve that. Renee, Calvin, you guys may have something to add. I don't know. Now that's that is really why this is being considered. There were. 2 corridors identified a number of years ago by the Department of Transportation to be limited access corridors. 1 of those being the market East market street corridor and the other being the northern section of the bypass from market street to the corporate limits. So, as part of that, that means no signalized intersections, no direct access other than by. Um, interchanges, so that is pri 1 of the primary reasons that this is being considered as an interchange and also to. Help with the safety of getting pedestrians and bicyclists across the bypass. For option a 1, will the pedestrian crossings include pedestrian alert buttons? With sounds and lights to indicate to the incoming traffic right of way. Um, so that's really, um, they, they will not have a, um, button that would, um, stop traffic. Um, there are treatments or, you know, flashing devices that can be considered, um. To help pedestrian or help warn motorists of pedestrians that could be considered as part of. Uh, the detailed design, but, um, as I mentioned earlier, they will not stop. We will, there wouldn't be a button to stop traffic. Will this study analyze if there's a need for sound barriers? The proposed study here for the conceptual design is going to just have a high level summary. Of the potential for sound barriers, but the actual analysis, once this would be funded, uh, would be completed at that time in a future uh, design contract. Um, you know, one thing that I would say is that for all alternatives, you know, there would be a, a similar type of level of potential impact from sound. So, if we're talking about trying to get feedback on the different alternatives, I, you know, I think it would be similar for each of the alternatives, but the detailed analysis would be later in a future phase of the project. Both sides of Battlefield Parkway are residential areas. How will we address additional increase in traffic recklessness and speeding? As we move into a design phase, and as we're completing the studies, we are working with our police department and we will be looking at what engineering components can be utilized on this classification of roadway to help with speeding. There's no easy answer to this because human behavior is human behavior, but it is something that we will be looking at and working closely with our police department to figure out how enforcement can be done um, and what other ideas may, may be there to try and incorporate into any final designs. Why can't we just have an overpass? No traffic from battlefield onto or off of Route 15. 
traffic, traffic, and more traffic. It's we need to have a system that does not put all of the traffic into one location to access the 15 bypass. For example, if we took this intersection away, all of this traffic would then go to the Edwards Ferry intersection of with the bypass or Fort Evans Road at the bypass, which are already highly congested, and that would create a worse problem there. The point of having the multiple interchanges is to disperse that traffic and to allow multiple points of access to help alleviate the congestion that we are all experiencing there. Dana, do you have anything else to add to that? Um, and I, I agree with your response, Renee, and, uh, you know, you, you end up with, um, if you start to prohibit movements, um, you end up with more circuitous travel patterns, longer travel, travel paths, sometimes U-turns at locations um, that may, you know, potentially be unsafe. So, um, you know, limiting access from the, the community, um, you know, really isn't um, one, of, one of the goals um, of the project. Can we share the pedestrian counts for weekdays and weekends? Um, so we um, have pedestrian counts crossing um, the bypass um, for the, the weekday peak hour. I was able to pull them up um, in the morning um, peak hour. We have four pedestrians crossing and in the afternoon we have uh, 21 pedestrians crossing uh, and that's in a 1 hour period. Um, you know, it, it it's. Um, you know, possible that there is some resistance or, you know, there, there could be more demand for that just um, because of uh, a feeling of uncomfort, you know, it's uncomfortable to cross um, the large facility. Has there been thoughts about combining the pedestrian walkways before the Route 15 crossing so only one is required rather than two? Uh, yeah, we we did consider uh, only providing the shared use path along the north side as it is out there today. Uh, however, because the intersections at Fieldstone Drive and Balls Bluff Road um, on either side of the uh, of the interchange are still under evaluation. We were hesitant to force those who would be coming from the south side uh, to cross over uh, and to, to get over to Route 15. Um, so we wanted to provide at least a south side option um, under these concepts. Uh, but that is certainly something that we can continue to look at, especially in, in light of the evaluations that are going to be going on at. Fieldstone Drive and Balls Bluff. Um, so that is something we would definitely take uh, your comments into consideration for. And one of the other reasons for having a both a shared use path and a sidewalk is that that is in compliance with the um, Legacy Leesburg Town Plan with the de design criteria that are there. So, when we move further through this, if we determine that it makes sense to do only one side of the, of the roadway, that is something that would have to go through a process with our planning and zoning group to determine that, to make a determination that we would be able to have a pedestrian facility on only one side of the road. What type of traffic backups or issues do we anticipate from school buses if we build alternative A with the two roundabouts? Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, um, we're, the, the preliminary traffic analysis of the roundabout alternative indicates very um, positive operations at the roundabouts. Um, our traffic counts that we conducted for the study uh, took into account any school bus traffic um, that's occurring there and was is taken into account in our operations models. Um, 
we would not anticipate that, you know, obviously a lot of times there'll be several school buses that show up um, at the intersection at, at a time, but we would not anticipate that it would um, create um, a very significant backup um, at the intersection and they would operate efficiently. Another thing to note about the roundabouts is we, you know, take into account, you know, the type of vehicle that would need to travel through the intersection. So certainly they would be uh, designed to easily account a school bus traversing the roundabout. Has anyone reported any issues with bike or pedestrian access ever since the crosswalk and sidewalk were added? To my knowledge, we have not had a reported issue. The crossing that we added was an interim measure waiting for this, this interchange. An at grade crossing of what is out there, five lanes plus the median and what is considered a medium to high speed at 45 miles an hour, while it's a marked crosswalk with pedestrian signals, is still not as safe a facility as it is when it's part of an elevated roadway over that type of facility. If the option is chosen that affects Fieldstone, would a pedestrian light be added? People already threaten pedestrians there. Um, so um, at the Fieldstone Drive, we're looking at um, traffic signal warrants um, based on counts actually that we conducted earlier this week. Um, I mentioned during the presentation that we wanted to wait until um, we waited until after spring breaks and, you know, traffic is starting to ramp up um, just in the spring. Um, so there are, um, as I mentioned, traffic signal warrants that we consider looking at uh, uh, crash data, traffic volumes, uh, pedestrian volumes to consider whether a traffic signal would be uh, needed at that intersection. And um, if a traffic signal was installed, pedestrian uh, lights um, or push buttons to let people cross safely uh, would be added. As part of the traffic operations study for the interchange, we are including this intersection to determine whether any of the interchange alternatives under consideration would make it more difficult um, and they could potentially make it easier for someone to cross at Fieldstone Drive. So that, so that will be considered as part of um, the traffic operations analysis. How have the various interchange designs been rated received? Example, Route 66 at Route 15 interchange. How successful has it been found? Ditto with Route 7, Route 9 interchange. Both of these designs are being considered here. So for the 66 route 15, I, I believe your question is, is how has you know, people responded to that? I would have to check with with VDOT uh, on that particular interchange since I, I was not involved in designing that one. Um, but a, another example that we did design or, or did the preliminary design similar to what we're doing here is at 64 and route 15. Uh, that was an existing diamond interchange that we converted to a diverging diamond. And that saw a significant decrease in the accidents uh, because it eliminated that left turn movement that we discussed earlier. Uh, so from a safety standpoint, uh, you know, I've been hearing very positive things on the DDI. It does move a, a greater amount of traffic because it has the left you know, only two phases within that signal. Uh, so I think it depends on, on where you're locating it. Does the traffic match the need is one of the things that Dana is analyzing. I have heard some feedback and, you know, Karen or the town can, can uh, add some other comments about the Route 7 and the Route 9. Now that is a, a a different type of interchange in my mind for the roundabout. The Route 9 is a heavy, heavy movement coming in to those roundabouts, so it dominates the operation of the roundabout. 
what we're looking at here at Battlefield is we re really have kind of equal traffic approaching from different legs and, and for a single lane roundabout. We see this working very efficiently that people that approach up up to the roundabout will have an opening and be able to to merge right in. So, I think that you really need to you know, get the whole effects of the traffic analysis that Dana's group is currently working on and we haven't completed that yet. But I do anticipate at this location, both of those interchanges would work very efficiently from a traffic standpoint. I don't know, Dana, if you have anything to add to that. I think, I think you've addressed it. The next 2 questions are very similar, so I'll be combining them. If pedestrian bicycle safety is an issue. Why don't we consider an overpass or a pedestrian bridge and walkway over Route 15? We had done, the town had done studies back in 2008 to 2010 timeframe at the Edwards Ferry bypass intersection related to a bridge only for pedestrian and bicycle safety. At the time those studies were done, the information that we received for that was given the circuitous nature of the route to get to the bridge for to meet ADA requirements, that people are still more likely to cross the at grade intersection than they are to use just a straight pedestrian facility over the larger road. And given that information, looking at spending 10 to $15 million just for a pedestrian bridge, it was not considered a feasible alternative given the use that it would probably see. Okay. Why is there not an option to eliminate access from Route 15 from Battlefield? I think we had already addressed this one previously. Yes, it, it comes it comes down to putting more traffic to already existing intersections that are already showing existing con congestion and more circuitous longer routes of travel for for individual trek trips and Dana is there anything else you want to add that we didn't touch on in the previous one uh, yeah no i mean again just to repeat that um you know that traffic the, the goal is to get traffic that would potentially be using the bypass um, but is avoiding the bypass due to the congestion at the various signals there um, out of the communities or and not cutting through the communities. So if we do remove all of the traffic signals along the bypass, that makes it more attractive um, for motorists, um, you know, including maybe those from Maryland to, to remain on the bypass rather than potentially cutting through on battlefield. When do we anticipate requests for proposals to be released and construction to be started? So we're a really long way from getting to construction with this project. We've got a lot of steps still to go and some other projects that are higher priority than this one, like the Edwards Ferry, Fort Evans Road interchange. So we don't have a schedule yet for when we're going to going to go to construction on this project. At this point, do we have an order of magnitude cost comparison for the options that show a higher cost? Uh, 
at mine too. Um, yes. No. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, no, we don't. I don't think we've got that yet. That's going to be part of what we're going to generate as part of this initial study. And maybe John, you might have something to add to that. Yeah. I mean the you know calls for the interchanges are, are going to be you know somewhat similar because you're elevating battlefield up and over the bypass. Um, you know the one that'll you know be the cheapest or the least expensive would be the single lane roundabout because you have only one lane in each direction across the proposed bridge. Uh, the traditional diamond and the uh, diverging diamond would have some similar cost. Uh, you know, one, the bridge might be a little bit more expensive than the other, you know, with the diverging diamond, you're spreading out the ramps when you're up on that fill. So there's some more earthwork, but yeah, I don't think it's going to be such a great difference that I would, you know, let that drive totally the uh, selection of an alternative here. I think it's more about how the traffic operates and, and it interchange would fit into your community is would be my concern because cost is going to be relatively uh, similar uh, for these interchanges next question why do the tunnels in alternative a option two have to be so far out of the way yeah, so the tunnels uh, that are shown in option two are are located based on the uh, ADA requirements of the sidewalk and the shared use path and having to bring those facilities up to get over the bridge. Uh, so the closer we bring those tunnels to the roundabouts, uh, the, the higher they have to go in a shorter distance. So finding that that location that allows for um, ADA compliance um, without providing a number of switchbacks is what uh, what we're showing right now. Uh, so that is what really drives the location of those tunnels is making sure those facilities are ADA compliant. For option A2, Given that the pedestrian tunnels are significantly removed from view, what design elements have been considered to reduce security concern in the tunnels at night? So, like I said before, we are in um, communication with the police department and we will be continuing to get their input. We've already discussed the need for lighting and potentially the opportunity to add cameras if there's problems there. We've also discussed wanting to make the tunnels visible from the Route 15 bypass. So we'll be continuing to work with them to do what we can to design them so they're as visible as possible and as safe as possible. Well, not part of this project, we mentioned that there are surveys all the way up to the Maryland border. Have there been any plans about widening or replacing the Point of Rocks bridge to and from Maryland? This question was asked of Loudoun County at their briefing to the town council on Monday night. And at this particular time, there, Maryland does not have any plans to widen that bridge. At the present time, there's little incentive for people to use Battlefield Parkway as a shortcut in the afternoon. What makes you think that by making it easier to go from Battlefield Parkway to Route 15, that this will not become a convenient shortcut? Battlefield Parkway has many children. It seems that a problem that does not exist is being exchanged for a safety problem for children. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned in response to one of the other questions, the goal um, with establishing the bypass as a limited access facility is to uh, bring traffic that may be shorting cut, short, shortcutting through uh, the community back to the bypass. Um, 
typically when you have a congested facility, such as the northbound backups on the bypass um, that you experience today, people will find alternate routes um, to get ahead of that queue, which, um, you know, again, would be Battlefield Parkway to, to get ahead of the traffic that's backing up, you know, way farther south of the intersection. So, um, you know, we, we do not intend for this project to add traffic to Battlefield Parkway. Uh, the goal is to, again, get that traffic back onto the bypass, um, you know, where the traffic signals would be removed and, um, and conflicts are minimized. There was a question asked about why we aren't reading all comments and questions posted. Karen, can you address yeah. this? Yeah, our plan was to answer questions with our question and answer session tonight. So we're not listing off comments, but certainly please provide those comments to us, especially on the survey. And those will be um, put, pulled together and presented to town council and, and everybody and staff is going to be looking at it as we move forward. So we definitely want your comments. Um, we're also trying not to do repeat questions. If if the question's already been answered, we're trying to move on to new questions so that we can get as, much, as many questions answered as possible. Okay. With all options, will a signal get added at Balls Bluff Road? Our community pool is there, and it is already like playing a version of Frogger to get across Battlefield. Um, so, similar to what I mentioned at Fieldstone Drive, we are conducting a traffic signal warn analysis there, uh, collecting uh, new count data, which includes speed data, uh, traffic volume information, information regarding pedestrian um, volumes, and that data will be uh, considered in, in um, relationship to national um, criteria for installation of a traffic signal. I, and in addition to that, which that would, that's going to be performed for existing uh, traffic volumes, we will be taking a look at whether any of the various interchange alternatives would have an impact, um, either positive or negative, on um, people's ability to um, get out of the Balls Bluff Road um, intersection. Would it be possible to entertain a bike and or walking path? That runs south from Battlefield to Edwards Ferry Road alongside Route 15 bypass. That is something that we can definitely take a take a look at. It is also a comment that came up with the um, bypass Edwards Ferry Road project. So this is something that is um, noted, and we will definitely take a look at the possibility. Were any proposed changes to the intersections of Plaza Drive and Battlefield Parkway, as well as Catoctin Circle and Battlefield reviewed? Uh, no, we didn't review those at the beginning of the presentation. We did talk about the Edwards Ferry uh, Road interchange and some of the projects that are, are planned for north route 15, but we didn't discuss anything about those projects. I don't know if there are any projects. Renee, are there any projects related to those intersections that you're aware of? No, I'm not aware of any additional projects at those at those intersections. The next question was about the pedestrian tunnels. What kind of lighting would we be including there? And would we have increased police patrol for those tunnels? Yeah, and this goes back to we are very conceptual design at this point. So that hasn't been determined yet, but we would certainly be getting uh, the police involved in providing that type of input for our design work and uh, Obviously, getting their input on, on whatever we can do to increase the safety if we build those tunnels. 
what will be done to discourage those traveling west on Battlefield from turning right onto Balls Bluff Road and bypassing the intersection at Route 15 Bypass and Battlefield? Uh, there are surrounding homes northeast of the intersection with traffic. Or, yeah. So, um, with the various interchange alternatives under consideration, um, we feel confident that the operations at the signal or roundabout that would be uh, somebody traveling on Battlefield Parkway to go north on the bypass would be able to turn with very little delay. Um, so, um, you know, motorists will typically take the um, the path with the least travel delay or the path of least resistance. Um, so we wouldn't think that they would have any incentive to cut through the Balls Bluff Road, um, or cut through on Balls Bluff Road um, through the community um, um, once um, the interchange was uh, constructed. Is there consideration of aligning this project with the widening of Route 15 to north of town limits? Has there been any consideration of removing the business interchange north of town? And has that traffic funnel to this interchange removing the choke point north of town? The intersection with the bypass 15 and business 15 north of town was studied as part of the phase one of the Loudoun County project from the northern corporate limits to Whites Ferry, Raspberry Falls, and on up to Montressor. The intersection that was designed there as the green T went through the full public input process and both council and board of supervisors for the selected alternative of the green T. So at this time, we will not be relooking at that intersection and how that intersection is being designed is being taken into account with our study alternatives. The next question was a follow up, which was just asking if direct ramping from Battlefield North will only push traffic congestion further north and increase traffic backups on the east side of Battlefield into the Potomac Crossing neighborhood. So I guess in terms of the timeline um, or order in which projects would occur, um, it is, you know, we're very confident that the widening project to the north on Route 15 um, into the county um, up to Montressor Road would occur uh, well in advance of this interchange project. So, um, understanding yes, the inter the widening of Route 15 north of Montressor um, is not um, funded at this time, but we do not anticipate that once the widening to Montressor occurs, that you would have those backups um, that would extend um, into this area. So. Um, you know, it's mentioned this project is not funded, whereas um, the widening of Route 15 north of here is funded. What is the panel's response to the fact that while doing nothing impacts traffic, environmental impacts are least negative, according to our chart, by doing nothing? And given that this entire redesign is on the assumption traffic will be improved, what evidence is there? That it will be that it will improve traffic if further north remains congested. So if if this signal remains here and the signals um, to the south of here at Edwards Ferry and Fort Evans Road are removed, you still will have this signal as the first signal that people will hit um, coming northbound. Um, on the bypass, so there still will re remain congestion at this intersection. Uh, regardless of improvements to the north and um, as I've mentioned a couple of times, we don't anticipate that with the widening project uh, that's proposed by the county 
um, to the north, that traffic would continue to back up into this intersection. We've said that this project will ultimately help residents, but we are prioritizing allowing drivers from out of state to have less delay. Uh, sorry, this one is a is a comment. There's a question there. Okay, next question. It is unclear why pedestrian issues are the focus on battlefield. Are there plans to provide pedestrian crossings at the uh, Route 15 and Edwards Ferry Road to get to the Target Shopping Center now that Walmart no longer exists? Yes, the bypass Edwards Ferry Fort Evans interchange project has extensive pedestrian facilities included with that project at both Edwards Ferry and Fort Evans Road. How long is the project time for completion and how much will the local traffic be disrupted? So we, we kind of addressed part of this earlier, but, I, I, you know, and the project is currently not funded, but for this type of interchange, you would typically be looking at two and a half to three years for uh, construction. Uh, you would be able to maintain traffic at the existing intersection. Uh, but the actual final design of that would be determined once this is uh, funded. Are Balls Bluff residents going to lose battlefield access to Route 15 for all options? So, I may have confused people there when we were talking about that access alternatives. Uh, when I was talking about Balls Bluff, you know, it's that road that's kind of behind the subdivision there that's not used today. And that was the access we were wanting to remove. It just really accessed that private property uh, northeast of town. There should be no uh, difference in traffic operations of how people get to the bypass from Balls Bluff of where it intersects Battlefield. How close will the on and off ramps be for the residents at the intersection of Battlefield and 15, specifically the homes that back onto Route 15 in the Potomac Crossing neighborhood? So, there is a little bit of a range in that distance, uh, specifically on the eastern side, um, adjacent to Potomac Crossing. Um, as we as we showed, the diverging diamond um, has the largest footprint, and that distance from those ramps um, is is about a hundred feet of buffer between where we have the ramp currently laid out conceptually to uh, to the residents. Um, and that ranges to the roundabout options where that's a little over 300 feet to the ramps uh, from the from the houses. Okay. The next questions are about slide five and slide eight that refer to Falls Bluff Road. For slide five, they assume that. This would close unused openings on Route 15 bypass. Is that correct? Tyler, can you bring up slide five? Yep. Oops, that's five. So I, I believe that question is talking about the 
where we have the label of Balls Bluff Road. Um, Tyler, if you can you know, point to that. And that is that old roadway that went to the park that's on a 30 foot easement, uh, you know, behind the subdivision there. And that is what we would be closing off access or desire to close off access to 15 to where there could not be an access to the private property. That road is currently not in use. If you've been out there, it's got trees, you know, growing pretty much over it and, and it doesn't look like anybody's used it in a while. So, uh, that was a part of Balls Bluff Road we were talking about there. Next question is on slide eight. Do you want to bring that up? Do I guess either... the same slide. Oh, okay. Do either access alternatives use current Potomac Crossing property in back of Barksdale Homes from Battlefield to 15 Bypass? Tyler, are you bringing that up? I think it's the same. I think we're talking about the same place. This is slide eight. Okay. Um, I, I think that must be the same question. If you could, if we're not understanding that question, if you can post another one to help us, that that would be fine. Have you compared the relative environmental impact of each of these alternatives, emissions, limestone cars, et cetera? How do alternatives rank in the reduction of emissions? So as far as the different alternatives, um, you know, the impacts that we have seen uh, are slightly different with the right of way already being uh, acquired or, or provided for the interchange. There, there's minor, you know, wetlands or streams in there that would be impacted. And it's basically equally kind of per uh, the alternatives. We also believe the noise impacts would be very similar. Uh, you know, between the different alternatives uh, that we're looking at. As far as emissions, and uh, I don't know, Dana, if you want to comment here. Yeah, I can and chime in on that. I mean, um, in terms of emissions, um, the current uh, condition at the intersection, emissions are generally greater with um, traffic that, that is either stopped or, or stalled or uh, traveling at a slower uh, speed in, in this area. So, with the um, existing condition, obviously, you would have greater emissions uh, with the roundabout where motorists are not stopping. Um, generally, you would anticipate, um, but, you know, or, or there's less stopping. There's more of a yield condition compared to the traffic signals. You think that the roundabouts would um, fare uh, better than the traffic signals, but as, as part as the project moves forward, a, you know, a formal uh, uh, NEPA evaluation or uh, National Environmental Policy Act um, uh, evaluation would be for, uh, performed um, to evaluate um, all of the alternatives under consideration. What changes are under consideration for the Battlefield Parkway intersection with Balls Bluff Road? So at, at Balls Bluff, you know, we're tying uh, back in just to the west of that intersection. Uh, so we do not anticipate any you know, real permanent changes there. I mean, during construction, there might be some shifts of traffic. Uh, within that intersection. Um, I don't know, Dana, if that is referring also to you, know, you looking at the uh, signal warrants there would be something that if that did warrant a signal, you know, that would be something that could modify that intersection at that time. Uh, yeah, just, just to confirm, no, no physical changes or um, under consideration, uh, except for you know, the consideration of a, a traffic signal uh, that will be evaluated both for existing conditions as well as um, future with the interchange uh, alternatives.
Would all of the options require the elimination of the existing community monuments on both sides of Battlefield Parkway? I, be I believe that's referring to the uh, signs down near the intersection is my assumption, and those Correct. would end up being removed if this interchange uh, was built. Uh, one thing is if you're elevating battlefield up and over, you know, they would probably physically impact them, but you also wouldn't be able to see them. Uh, so those might need to be relocated to where they would be a more effective uh, signing with the new interchange. Why are we stating that roundabouts mean uncontrolled pedestrian access? We make the rules pedestrians and the RAB means drivers stop. Um, yeah, so um, thanks for that question. And I think the RAB um, is referring to pedestrians and the roundabout means drivers stop. Um, are, as I mentioned during the presentation, um, just for comparison of the alternatives, we defined an uncontrolled pedestrian crossing as one where um, a pedestrian would not have a walk indication and the motorist would not be given a red indication. Um, you are correct that um, motorists um, should yield to pedestrians um, in um, the crosswalk um, that are crossing at the roundabout. So, um, I, um, I mean, you, you are correct, but again, the pedestrian um, does not have a walk indication and the motorist doesn't have a green in, or a red indication or red traffic signal. So there is um, just more sort of cooperation between the pedestrian and the vehicle that needs to occur at the roundabout crossings. Regardless of what, if anything is done for this exchange, the bottleneck will always be the bridge, which is owned by Maryland, which will create a bigger parking lot. The larger the footprint means the closer this noisy traffic is to my house 24 hours a day to address traffic issues with only. A, which only occur a couple hours a day. Why would I or any of my neighbors think the sacrifice by us for through traffic is a reasonable idea? There are a lot of there are a lot of different things playing into what we're doing with with this project. You have two or three projects that Loudoun County's working on to the north. We have this interchange project and the status and where we are of this project is just for this type of input. It is the public input phase. So we can't answer that why question for you. It it is seen as a benefit for a number of reasons. But your feedback that you're providing tonight is important to lead us to which option is the best for this area. And remember, one of the options is the no build. So we will be looking at all of these comments to put together our preferred option that will move through the balance of the process. Are alternatives being explored that do not remove the signal? The only alternative being a you know, studied currently is the no build alternative with that signal remaining. Um, as the, the goal is to provide free flow movement along the bypass, we, we have not considered any other thing, any other alternatives, but no build. Why not have Route 15 go under Battlefield in a tunnel? So, so that is an alternative that we haven't explored, but you know, just knowing the uh, terrain and the geology here, um, 
you know, putting Route 15 down and under in a tunnel uh, would likely be a, a lot more expensive alternative uh, just due to the structural cost of that. So and when we've studied those types of what I call over and under studies in the past, the kind of the tunnel option is always a lot more expensive. And here, I think we'd have some challenges with drainage of that depressed area. What factors will impact the decision for lights at Fieldstone and Balls Bluff Road? Um, so, as I've uh, mentioned in response to some of the other questions, um, there are federal guidelines in the um, what's called the manual on uniform traffic control devices that take into account uh, traffic speed data along the by, uh, along battlefield. Um, traffic volumes, um, we collect data for a 12 hour period. So we look at traffic volumes throughout the day. Um, we look at um, crash data. Um, there's a number of crashes um, considered um, that is, is one of the warrants for um, installing uh, signals. Um, pedestrian volumes are another consideration. So we we weigh um, or you know we weigh the values that we've collected in the field based on the criteria to see if we meet any of those criteria um, that would warrant a traffic signal. Could you incorporate the walk lights at the roundabout by just moving it a bit further away from the roundabout itself and a bit further into the straightaways? reducing potential driver confusion. So um, if we were to put a traffic signal, um, say just on the approach to the roundabout, you know, just outside of the interchange, uh, the challenge that that could create is if um, the light turns red uh, to allow a pedestrian to cross, um, the traffic could back up into the roundabout that would um, potentially sort of lock up the roundabout. So you really want the traffic um, not to be stopping coming out of the roundabout for a pedestrian crossing. Um, yeah, th that's why we would potentially not consider putting a signal um, outside of the roundabout. Are the di uh, diagrams for all of the options showing that the open green space in the Potomac Crossing neighborhood is being lost? So, with the town's um, advanced planning and purchasing all of the right of way, there's, you know, there's that ample green space um, in the areas between the bypass and the neighborhoods, and depending on the layout that ultimately gets refined, um, that green space could be maximized to provide to provide a nice buffer. And, and depending on the footprint of the alternative, um, as you as you see the, the roundabout options, those ramps are pulled in pretty close to Route 15. So that uh, allows for quite a bit of the green space to remain. Now, depending on what type of stormwater management um, approach is used, some of that green space might be necessary for a pond, uh, but in terms of pavement area, it, it's going to be pretty minimal. Um, it'll just be the width of the ramp for the most part, unlike a, a clover leaf or, or a big interchange where all of that space would be taken up with loops and ramps. If the four lane expansion of Route 15 North does not happen, or get funded, will the battlefield interchange not happen since that project supersedes this interchange? Loudoun County does have the funding in place for phase one of their project, which is the widening to and through the Whites Ferry um, Raspberry Falls project, and I believe up to Montressor Road. And as Karen indicated in the in our presentation, the information for both of those projects is on the county's website. So you can find out exactly what the status is of their project widening 15 north of Battlefield Parkway. 
If option two for the roundabout option is selected, what would need to be done to mandate all pedestrian traffic use the safer pedestrian tunnels? Normally, if we would proceed with that type of alternative, we would try to design it to where the pedestrian or bicycle felt like that was just the natural path. But we would also try to put in positive, uh, say, barriers or rails that would guide them that way that uh, you know, they would have to actually basically try to walk around to continue straight up through the uh, uh, a long battlefield. Um, you know, so it is a very challenging thing. I, I've been amazed on some projects that we've uh, you know, designed things and, and pedestrians and bicycles pretty much follow it. I've seen other ones where it's very difficult for them to get through, but yet they still go the way they want to go. So uh, we would do, if we selected that alternative, do everything possible to make sure they stayed on the path. The, the other thing we could do is make other connections uh, to those paths, if, if you notice, you on the uh, east side, you have uh, trails around the subdivision. You could make other connections that would make that a, a more direct access uh, to that. But that would, again, community would have to look and, and decide on whether that was a connection that they would, you know, want to get in, you know, into that area. So it. Really, it's just you got to focus on it in the final design and, and try to do the best you can. But it, it is a difficult design element for them to go out of their way. What would be the height of the overpass and slope of battlefield on approach to the overpass? Thinking from a pedestrian cyclist perspective, the overpass at Route 7 and Battlefield is rough for the casual cyclist pedestrian. I guess there's no option to route pedestrians and cyclists under Route 15. So the height of the overpass will have to be approximately 17 feet in vertical clearance over uh, the bypass, um, which puts us at about a 4% grade as you approach from either direction on Battlefield Parkway. And that slope is uh, is not as steep as, as over at 7 and, and Battlefield. So I think it would be a, a, a gentler up and down over the bridge here. Um, and as John mentioned earlier, um, routing pedestrians under Route 15 would be similar to a, a, long, a long tunnel that could, could run into Geological and, and other cost uh, cost constraints. Why not just build a bridge from Route 28 in Sterling across to Maryland? The new traffic light at Battlefield and Route 15 light has improved pedestrian and bike crossings. I'm glad to hear the positive feedback on the new light at Battlefield and Route 15 for the improved pedestrian bike crossing. Um, the bridge from Route 28 in Sterling across to Maryland is a larger regional issue that has been being dealt with at the political level at both town council, Loudoun County, and VDOT levels. So I do not have an answer on how far along or if that project is moving at all. Will this presentation be available on the town's website? Yes, it will. We're gonna post it hopefully tomorrow morning, so it should be available for those of you who might wanna reference it again before you um, fill out the survey form. So it will be available along with the presentation materials that you're seeing tonight. Those will be up on the website as well. So um, uh, we're running out of time here. So we are at 8.59 and change. So by the time I give my closing remarks, we're gonna be at nine o'clock. So I think we're gonna cut off the questions at this point. Like I said before, we are going to post a frequently asked question sheet to the website that tries to address the, the basic questions that we're receiving. Give us a couple of weeks to get that together. It's gonna to take us a little while to pull all these questions down and get them answered for you. Um, 
but we really appreciate you coming out to the meeting tonight and providing your questions to us. We hope that you did get some information and that you understand better what the project's about. Um, please, please, please go online and fill out the survey and provide um, your comments there as well. That's gonna be a really helpful way for us to get your input and be able to pull it together, excuse me, <coughs> and, pre and present it to town council. Goodness, <coughs> I'm really sorry. Got a frog in my throat. So um, yeah, as I said, the survey results are really important for our decision-making process. So we really would like that input. <laughs> and so as I can't speak anymore, I'm going to say good night to everybody. So thank you very much for your time and um, come back to our next meeting. Thank you. So Christine, you're going to